hello, um, studio audience and um, people watching TV all over Canada. My name is Simon LeBon. I'm with a band called Duran Duran. And next to me is a young man known as Nick Rhodes. And I play keyboards for a band called Duran Duran. Duran, 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 Duran absolutely. Duran. The band's so good they named it twice. Um, that makes Duran, 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 Duran. And hey, have you heard the news? Duran Duran's on Good Rockin' Tonight. Welcome to a very special edition of Good Rockin'. Our guests are Duran Duran, the band so nice, they named them twice. Hi, my name's Terry David Mulligan, and unless you've been climbing Mount Everest or living in a cave, the amazing success story of Duran could not have escaped your eyes and ears. Not since Beatlemania has there been a group so popular with the masses. However, do not compare them to the Beatles, because Duran themselves are the first to shoot down such parallels. They are not the new Beatles. But the fan response is the same. The Fab Five have the distinction of being the first band to gain huge fame through the use of videotapes. Simon Le Bon joked several years ago that the band's aim was world domination by 1984. Little did Simon know how close they've come to reality. They are superstars all over the world. Joining Simon in this interview is Nick Rhodes, the unrelated tailors in the band. You know, John, Roger, and Andy were flat on their backs from a combination of flu and jet lag, so they were excused from the show. My first question is to Simon and Nick, and it concerned the obvious need to combat rising egos within the band. Everybody, I think the, the thing is amongst five of us, because there's always at least four that have got their feet firmly on the ground. They always, as soon as somebody starts floating up a little bit, just yank them back yeah, down again. That's right. Um, sure. And we all sort of keep each other in place. There's no room for any inflated ego, because everybody's so big anyway. <laughs> No matter what you look like, no matter how good your videos are, no matter how good your concerts are, if it's not in the songs, it's not going to happen. So how goes the songwriting? Um, well, we've just, uh, it seems that we've just finished our third LP, but it's about time to start writing the fourth one. Um, it's going really well. It's, things are developing, you know, we, we are developing much more, sort of, personally. Mm -hmm. Relationships which go together to make, to make songs, it's happening. Yeah, I think the, the third album, the Seven and the Ragged Tiger album, is definitely a big progression from the Rio album. Whereas Rio only moved on a tiny little bit from the first Duran Duran album, I think. The, the Ragged Tiger album's really gone a long way, which is good. You did of the snake, what, what was it all about? Um, it's just about this, this, this dreadful feeling that somebody's knocking on the door, of, you know, from your subconscious, trying to get out into, into your conscious mind. We shot it in, in Australia after very little pre-production. And um, it took three days, which should have, took, t should have taken three days. It actually took five, because we had this location planned out. It was like a, a beautiful sand dune, virgin sand dunes. Wonderful weekday. Saturday morning, we get there to do shooting. And the whole of southern Australia's driving their little motorbikes on it. <laughs> so that's our desert gone, finished. <laughs> Myself, Nick, and uh, Duran Duran will be back in a few minutes after you've watched this. We'll be back with Duran Duran in a couple of minutes, but first, here's this week's national top 20 album countdown. Number 20, ZZ Top, Eliminator, Survivors to the End. New at number 19, Motley Crue, and Shouted the Devil. Number 18 is Big Country, The Crossing. Number 17 last week, number 17 this week, The Rolling Stones and Undercover. Number 16 is Quiet Riot, Metal Health, still hanging in there. Number 15, moving up one notch, UB40, fine British reggae band and labor of love. Number 14 is The Police and Synchronicity. Still in there, Billy Idol, number 13, and Rebel Yell. Number 12 is John Cougar Mellencamp and Aha, uh -huh, moving off and out. Moving from 14 to 11, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, Milk and Honey. Moving from 13 to 10, The Pretenders and Learning to Crawl. Up two notches, The Eurythmics, number nine, and Touch. The Romantics still hanging in, in the top 10. They're eight last week, eight this week. Number seven is Lionel Richie and Can't Slow Down, moving off the top 10. Moving up one notch, a very hot album, Van Halen, 1984. 
Moving up a notch again, Duran Duran, number five and seven in the Ragged Tiger. Number four is Yes and 90125. Genesis, with their self-titled album, is number three, as same as last week. Number two, locked in again, Michael Jackson with Thriller. And finally, for the seventh week in a row, Culture Club, color by numbers, number one. Okay, let's get back to our special with Duran Duran. When the group released their first single back in 81, they became the new darlings of England's large dance crowd, the new romantics, they called them. Duran followed up the single with their first video. Now, it wasn't as spectacular as what was to follow, but it's nice to see their beginnings. Here's Planet Earth on Good Rockin' Tonight. Rio. Rio is a, well, it's a song about, about um, a fabulous girl. It's got a lot of overtones of North America because it's based on a lot of the experiences we had here and people we met and girls we saw. And uh, it's just, the, the video, the story is, is that these, this bunch of five, a bunch of five total bloody idiots chasing after one beautiful girl and all screwing it up. And we did that in Antigua, um, under the hot tropical sun, which was, it was a great place to film. It's come out beautifully on the film. But of course, you've got, we've got, we've come up with a lot of flack for being too jet set -y for that one. Well, I quite think you've done it in Brighton or Coventry. Or... <laughs> You try <laughs> diving off a very you try strange. diving off a boat into the into, into the, the sea of bright <laughs> not, come not up. very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, there were jellyfish in the water when we did that bit. Oh, it was horrible. Mm. Actually, Actually, yachts make me feel sick. To be honest, they really do. No. I don't mind them. I think they should. Their natural place is to be tied up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is it? No. Paper the other day that there was going to be <clears throat> this was for the passing fad videos. Passing <laughs> fad. It'd be gone in two years. <laughs> I don't really yeah. that. <laughs> That's what they said about us three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. They were wrong. It's not a passing fad. It's the biggest thing that's happened to music for a long time. I like, I like video for songs because I think it, it just makes the whole thing a lot more three-dimensional, which is, which is interesting because it puts ideas into people's heads. I mean, I, I find myself now when I'm watching a video, I pick up on things in the song that I would never have thought about myself, or I might have thought it was about something totally different to the way it's presented in the yeah. video, which is nice, because that adds that whole extra thing. But I think what you said about simulcast and live videos, yeah. I think that's a great use, but the only thing is with live videos, I much prefer people to be at a concert, or I prefer mm. being at a concert than watching it on a screen. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no substitute for actually standing in front of somebody, you know, on stage without any sales techniques, without any, you know, any clever video techniques or, or studio musical tricks because you're absolutely naked in front of your audience. Do you then? You know, we asked several weeks ago two Duran trivia questions. Watch your screens. We're going to announce the 49 winners. We can't thank you for the response. It was absolutely fantastic. Letters from all across the country and down in the States as well. All of you had the correct answers. We can't thank you enough. It was just fabulous. The guys will give you the correct answers in just a couple of minutes. The winners will receive Duran 7 and the Ragged Tiger uh, cassettes or the official calendar 1984. We'll send them out to you. We've left off one name. That person has won this huge autographed Duran poster. We'll announce that name at the end of the show. The first question was, what is your hometown? Can you agree on that? Well, um, although members of the band are actually from different parts of England, we generally agree that the hometown of the band is located in the middle and it's called cool. Birmingham. Yeah. And the name of your soccer club is? Manchester. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. And the second question was to the trivia question, where was Hungry Like a Wolf shot? That was shot in a uh, little island just off the, I think it's off the east coast of India. Called oh, maybe great, it's called Sri Lanka. You never played Sri Lanka, so obviously you went there for a the workout. <laughs> where, where can you play in Sri Lanka? <laughs> yeah, real job. They have yeah. power cuts every two hours. Yeah. It's, um, it's the most impossible place to do anything, actually. We nearly fumbled the Hungry Like the Wolf video in the end because we had a whole verse left to shoot and an aeroplane to catch in about three and a half hours when and there was a power cut. cut. <laughs> and there's only like two <laughs> generators on the whole island. So. Yeah. We made it though, eventually. This is Nick and I'm Simon. We're from Duran Duran. And we'll be back with you in a few moments after you've watched this.